In this video, I'm going to show you how to model utilities in 3D using OpenBridge Modeler. And essentially, it's really just using MicroStation Connect Edition tools, so it applies for that as well. Now, to start off with, you're going to need at least one file and maybe up to three. And the one file that you're definitely going to need, obviously, is your utilities file. On this utilities file, it's going to have all of the utilities drawn in there, and they're most likely going to be on elevation zero because there's no no elevation data associated with this file. So let's take a look at this real quick here. Go ahead and turn this reference on. As you can see here, all of the information in this file is flat, and we're going to go ahead and look at the front view just to show you this. And if you want to check to make sure where what the elevations are on some of these, you can just tentative snap to a point. And you can see elevation zero. So this is good in terms of the x y coordinates, but in terms of elevation wise, it's not accurate. Now this utility file is going to be a bare minimum what you need to do this kind of modeling. A lot of times we also have some survey of the utilities. In this case, we have it here. And this is going to be some ground shots where they located the utility. So this is going to have that missing piece of information that we had from the previous file, which is the, the Z coordinate or the elevation. And these elevations are going to be surface elevations in my case here. So it's a existing ground shot right over where they located the utility. So we're going to turn off our, our 2D utility file here and turn on the survey file and we'll show you what that looks like. So now if I go in here and rotate, you're going to see that this actually has that, that missing component, that elevation component here. Now it's not all perfectly flat, and this is where they're taking the shots along the utility, along the existing ground. And to see it really well, we can just go into a front view. Now you see it's not a flat line, so this actually has that, that elevation associated with it. And again, this is going to be uh, existing ground surface where they located the utility. So you still have to go down the depth of wherever the, whatever, whatever the cover is that they uh, surveyors identified for the, each utility. And the last file that we usually have uh, is going to be the existing ground survey. So this is going to be your, your surface file. So this is just your normal normal surface file here. Uh, in this case, it was a lot bigger than this, and I clipped it down to just the project area. So there's two different types of uh, modeling scenarios you're going to come into in terms of modeling utilities. The first one is going to be one where you don't have that survey information, and you're just modeling it based on that 2D survey file but then adjusting it roughly to where it should be based on the existing ground. And that involves using this terrain file here. The second one is going to be just go ahead, going ahead and modeling the utilities of the, the survey file that you have. So we'll go ahead and start with that. We're going to look at you know, how to model that utility that's been surveyed, and we still just need to apply some kind of depth or cover to it to adjust it to where it needs to be. So for that workflow, we're going to turn this uh, existing ground file off for now and then go ahead and turn back on our survey file here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and model this buried fiber optic cable here. And you can see it's in a couple different pieces right now. So that's going to be the first step is going ahead and combining these. But first, before that, I'm going to go ahead and just isolate this so that it's easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the pieces of it that I want to bring in, which for this project, you know, those two pieces are good enough and we'll just kind of keep it simple for now. So I have those two pieces selected. I'm going to right click and displace it to isolate that those two objects. And now you can see in this view here, only those two objects are selected or shown. So to combine these two things, what we do is go up to home and i'm also in the the modeling workflow here but you can be in the the drawing workflow as well but i'm going to stay in the modeling workflow so i'm going to go to modeling home and under groups you have create complex chain so i'm going to go ahead and do that i'm going to select my first piece 
and my second piece, and then data click, reset, and now it's all in one piece here. And this is on the level default here. Um, so that's a good point here. Let's go ahead and set up our, our levels uh, quickly, just for these two different utilities we're going to model here. And I'll just keep it simple here. I'll just call it buried fiber optic. Put a zero in front of it to keep it on the top of the list here, just for easy to use. Go ahead and call it uh, number five, two, and these are just settings that anyone can can play around with to whatever the whatever they need it to be. And the other one I'm going to do is just going to be a uh, buried electric cable. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my buried fiber optic level. Now one thing to mention is that when you use this uh, create complex chain command to combine those two pieces, you are combining two pieces of a reference file. And that doesn't do anything to your reference file, but it does create that complex chain element here in your design file. So to show you that, we're going to go ahead and clear the display set. And then we'll go ahead and bring our reference window back over and turn off that reference. So now you can see just the piece of the survey that we brought in and we created that complex chain from. So that just, again, that just created a, took the elements in the reference file, combined them and put them here in your, in your native design file here. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our profile on the end of our, our line here and loft it along line segment here. So in order to do this, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is realign your, your ACS to the beginning or the end of your, your survey line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the very beginning here until I get a, a straight piece of the segment. And then I'm gonna go to drawing aids, define ACS and define ACS by element. So you can see here, as I am snapping to points on this element, it's going to go ahead and snap itself to where it needs to be to align itself with this element. And if I go to this next element, it's going to go ahead and shift now to be aligned with this element, because this is a different uh, segment of the line. You can see how it kind of switches right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the end of this segment here, because this is where I want it to be. Now with our ECS there, we're just gonna go back to home and click on the circle tool here. And I know that this particular utility is a 36 inch diameter pipe. And you notice here, you know, I need to go ahead and align it with the X, actually the Y, Z plane in this case here. Um, but I know, how do you do that? Well, now that I have my ACS uh, turned on, and align to this line segment here. All I need to do is click on my little lock function down here and click on ACS plane lock. What this will do is now lock my planes to the, this ACS here. And all I have to do to flip the circle is t play around with the different toggles. So you got front, top, and side. Now those are the keys in the keyboard, F, T, and S. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit F and see if, that, if that's what I wanted to do. And looks like, nope, that's going to, you know, go about this different axis here. So now I'm going to try top. Nope, top's going to be just this planar one. I'm going to click on side. And side looks good. Now that's going to be uh, perpendicular or orthogonal to this line segment here because I set my ACS based on this line segment here. So I'm going to go ahead and place that right there. And I'm going to zoom in on this side here and you can kind of see that. You rotate around to make sure it looks correct. Yep, that looks pretty good. All right, so now you're ready to go ahead and model your pipe. And to do that, you're gonna go, stay in the modeling workflow, go to Home, and actually go to Solids, and Extrude Along. Now, whenever you wanna know what to do in terms of the next step of a command, like in this case, Extrude Along, you just look down here on the, the command prompt. So once you just select the path element, this is the path I want it to go along. And now I want to select the profile, and this is my profile. Then you can kind of get a preview of what that's going to look like. In this case, is it's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and data click 
And there's my utility pipe, modeled in 3D. If you want to look at it in a different type of view, like a more uh, realistic view, you can look at it uh, in this view. Let's take a peek at it and make sure it looks good. Yeah, it looks nice. So again, now you have a nice 3D utility pipe mapped based on the survey that, that you were given. Now, the one thing about this, though, is this survey was at the ground, remember? So this would actually be at the ground level. So we need to adjust that to whatever the, the cover was that the surveyor determined in the survey. So we're going to turn back on our survey file here and see if there, that cover information is listed in there, and it usually is. So we'll kind of zoom in down here. And here is the information on that. So with, this is a 36-inch uh, pipe, and the, the cover that they got in this shot here was 7 feet. And then over here, which is actually more of the area of interest that we're, we're looking at, you know, their cover uh, for this one was about 5.6 feet. So we'll go ahead and adjust this uh, 5.6 feet because this is more of the area of the project here. This is, this is the area of concern. So we're going to go ahead and turn off that survey file, switch to a front view, and then we're just going to select this whole utility pipe we just modeled here, and we're going to say move, did it click anywhere? And then just want to go down and we're going to type in 5.6 feet. And now we just shifted it down 5.6 feet. Turn on that survey file again. Make sure that was it. Yep, 5.6 feet. So that should be good. Now we can do a check real quick by turning on our existing ground and looking back in that. Uh, more realistic 3D model surface file. Let's check to see if this seems realistic in terms of where that utility is located at based on the ground line, and it does. Looks like it's located in the right spot. So this is the workflow for taking the utility survey information, modeling it, and then adjusting it down to the cover depth that the, was in the file. The next workflow we're going to go over is, you know, what if you don't have that survey file? What if you just have your utility file, which is that 2D file without any kind of elevation associated with it? So we're going to go ahead and turn off our existing ground file for now. And we're going to turn on our utility file that we have. Now the utility that we don't have any survey for information we're going to look at here in this case is going to be this, uh, the sanitary line up here. So it's going to be kind of similar in what we do. You know, we're going to look, oh, turn on the reference here, and the first thing we're going to do is go to the level we want to put on, put this on. Actually, I said the a barrier electric, so we'll just go ahead and use that level for now. And create complex chain. You're going to click these one by one at a time after you click that tool. Data click. And now it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that utility file off. And now this is native geometry in my design file here, and it's a complex chain. So the process is going to be the same as it was for uh, doing this one here. So we're just going to go ahead and go to Drawing Aids, define our ACS by element, and we'll just start down here since this is an easy spot. Go ahead and click on this segment. Now my ACS is aligned with this segment here. This particular line, I believe, was a 12 inch, so we'll set one foot for the diameter. And again, and we'll, we'll show you how it looks in this view over here, just kind of get a better view of that rotation of the, the ACS we were talking about. Uh, one thing you can notice here, too, is that ACS that got moved here didn't get moved here. So that's view-specific. So let's just go back into this view and find that again by the element. Looks good. 
All right, now we'll go back and do our circle. One foot diameter, that looks good. And you notice here it's in the top view. That's not what we want. We want to go ahead and hit S. And that's going side to side. That's not what we want, so let's try front. And then you can see in this view as well, that's the correct orientation for this pipe, for the profile of the pipe. Let's go ahead and data click to accept. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. Go to solids, extrude along, select the path, select the element, and data click. And now you have this water main modeled in 3D here. So the problem with this one is though, again, if we go ahead and reset our ACS is to get the global coordinates correct. Go ahead and reset it here as well. So now when I data click on this center of this pipe here, you can see elevation zero. So that's again, that's because that line work and that utility file we got didn't have any elevation information associated with it. So the best thing we can do at this point is just move it to wherever we think it needs to be based on common you know, best practices and then the existing ground file. So in this case, you know, I talked to the, the roadway guys, the utility coordinator, and they said, you know, that's probably going to be three foot down from the, the surface. So what we need to do is go ahead and turn on that existing ground. And again, the area that I'm interested in is going to be this area right around here, because this is where gonna, where my, one of my peers is going to be. So I'm just going to start data clicking around here, and I'll use the, the nearest one, just so I can snap on to points on the surface here. So I'm just going to start tentative clicking and seeing what these elevations are. So I got 112, 111, 112, 111. So 111, 112 is a pretty pretty common number here. So let's go ahead and just bring it up to about uh, 111. And to get to do that, we're just going to change this view the front. We're going to go ahead and select it. Spacebar, move, up, and then keep that ACS lock on. It's locked vertically right now. I'm going to type in 111 just to make sure it stays below the ground. All right, so now that's moved up 111 feet, and it's still selected. So I'm going to, again, spacebar move, and I'm going to bring it down three feet, because I think it's going to be three foot down from that surface in that area. And now your utility is located. This is going to be you know, rough, it's going to be best guess, but uh, it's what the best we can do with the information that we have in this particular case. So we can kind of take a look and see how we did in that 3D view here. And I don't see anything sticking up out of the ground, so I think we made a pretty good educated guess. So let's just take a peek underneath here and see where that utility is at. That looks pretty good. That's not, uh, no, nothing's poking out of the surface and it's you know, roughly where we think it needs to be. Another good view that you can use to look at this stuff is the transparent view. So to do that, you can just go over here to the visualization and do transparent. And I usually like modeling to keep that gray background. So now you can kind of see where the utilities are located at through your existing surface. And that's it. Now I know how to model utilities based on survey information or just the 2D utility file geometry that you typically get in a project. Hope you enjoyed.